Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use contrast paint Shyish Purple as well as their technical contrast medium to thin it down and get a strong result for the Merrick Militia Purple. I'm going to be using this Battlemaster model. As you can see, I've already primed it. I've actually done an airbrush Zenithal Prime. Now in my other contrast videos, I didn't do that. I did a solid color. I do like the overall result that you can get from this and you can do it with aerosol cans, but you can see the undersides have a much, much stronger shadow area. You don't have to do this for this to turn out a good result. It's just a subtle difference at the end when you're done with the painting and the highlighting that you'll be able to see just a little bit of a difference. I used gray as well as a white just very, very light coat on some of the highest points. Here's the surface primer I used. It's Viejo Gray. You can see it's a fairly light gray. So if you want to do a black base coat or just do a regular gray base coat, do a light gray. White will give you a stronger purple lightened result overall. And if that's what you're looking for, then I recommend you use white. This is the first contrast paint where I can suggest either white or gray for the base coat. The other thing I wanted to mention is before you start with your contrast paint is that if you want to do anything to the joints, any of the areas where there's those little rubber boot simulation things or some vents or other areas that you want to be either a black, a metallic or, or anything like that that are somewhat hard to reach, I recommend you do them now. It's easier to touch up a gray primer or a little bit of some black or whatnot now then once you have your color on and then you're trying to match that color later. So what I'm going to do in the real quick is just hit all the joints with some charcoal, viejo heavy charcoal, and then we'll move on to the contrast portion. You can see now I've got the joints and a couple other areas that I've gone and added that charcoal paint. And those are just going to keep me from having to potentially risk getting paint on the purple areas later on. I will say this, that if you do use a lighter color like a metallic silver or a lighter gray, the contrast paint is an actual paint and any color you put over that, since we're going to cover the entire miniature, will show up a little bit on there. So you may need to touch it up or you may just need to accept that it's going to have a little bit of a tinted color depending on what you're using the contrast on. Now for the contrast paints themselves, I've got Shyish Purple. This is a very dark color. You could also use Magos Purple, which is a lighter shade, but you will need to use more than one coat. Because I'm using the darker color, this will be the first time we're using technical contrast medium. It's essentially just a thinner meant specifically for the contrast paints. Beforehand, I went and tried out the contrast paint on a couple of different colors on over a white and a gray base color. And as you can see at 100% over gray, it's very dark. And the color that I felt was the best overall appearance was a ratio of two to one paint to mix medium over gray. This is over white and you can see it's just a little bit lighter and with me doing a dry brush over the contrast paint once it's finished, I felt that the gray base coat predominantly was what I was going to use. If you've seen my videos about contrast paints before, you'll know that you get that sediment on the bottom. Most of them will look like this. You have to shake them up. I put agitators in every single bottle and I shake them up every time I open the bottle. You want to make sure all of that medium is completely mixed, otherwise you can get some sporadic and undesirable results. I've shaken these bottles up, I've got my mixing medium, and then I'm going to use a bottle cap. Whatever you want to use to get your ratios correct. I'm also using a just a plastic drinking straw, and I'm just going to dip in to the contrast medium and get my one portion. And this way I don't tint my contrast medium. I'm going to mix well more than I would actually need to paint this, this battle mech, but because I want to be sure of the ratios, I'm going to just mix in a larger portion. Do whatever you need to do to get a good ratio, and then once I'm done with this contrast paint, I'll simply pour it back into the bottle. It'll just be slightly thinner than it was before, and I won't lose as much of the paint. Mix this completely, and then we'll get started. With the paint all mixed, I've got a paper towel to dry off my brush. Got my paint ready. I'm using a number three low Cornell synthetic, just a brush I use for washing and basing. 
just like all my other contrast tutorials. I'm going to start out from the top of the miniature and being more generous with the loading of the brush and the application and then as I work more towards getting close to finishing at the bottom, just a little bit less load of the contrast paint onto the brush. You want to work quickly, but not too sloppily. If you have other miniatures or things like that, maybe around your, te your desk, you should probably move those away. Every now and then I'll see a little bit of splatter on my mat and things like that. So you don't want to ruin a good paint job or something your heart part way through just because it was a little too close to the splash zone. Be cognizant of where the edge of the last applied layer of paint is sitting so that you can just keep pushing that forward to the next section and that'll help avoid the I guess tide marks and build up in certain areas that you might not really want. Again I usually like to do the top half of the miniature first and then do a quick check to see if I've covered everything. In general, I almost always find areas where the paint just slightly pulled back and left a little bit of a lighter colored area and I'll have to add a little bit of paint to it. I did want to mention that when you mixed the contrast medium, it's not a noticeable change if you put it on, say, some white palette paper or a plate or anything like that and a paper towel to see the the change in the overall tone of the purple so don't think that if you're adding it that you're not changing the properties of the contrast paint it was really difficult to tell and it might just be because it's this color but I just wanted to mention that that you're still doing it correctly if it doesn't look like what you'd expect it most times when you thin paints they tend to get a little bit more translucent and I, I really I thought it was a negligible difference Continue working until you've covered the entire miniature. Periodically check to see if you've got any heavy buildup, usually around armor panels and on the larger flat surfaces, make sure it just isn't, isn't just totally pooled up. And then you'll find some of those areas where you might have missed putting a little bit of the contrast paint and you'll see a lighter colored area. You don't want to spread it so thin that you're just clearing out all the contrast medium you want it to pull back away from those outer edges that's what gives you the lighter edge variation that the contrast paint is designed to do as you get towards the end I will mention you can use the contrast medium itself if you had a little bit extra sitting on a on a dish or the mixed paint to reactivate any area where you went and maybe tried to wick away some of the paint and you saw that it had tide marks because it started drying you can put a, just a, a good amount of the paint back on it, let it sit for a few seconds, and then move that paint around again and it'll reactivate that layer that was underneath it. And that'll help you to then be able to wick away more of the paint and not be left with the tide marks or any dried areas. I know it looks really dark on camera. I can't do anything about that. It's a really dark color. Let it dry completely, at least for an hour, and you can pour your remaining contrast paint back in the pot. Now that the purple contrast is dry, you can see it did lighten up a little bit. There is some sheen from the contrast paint, which is why some of the edges look a little bit shinier than they normally would, but it does look kind of cool. Time to dry brush. I've got a cheap makeup brush. You can get these pretty much anywhere they sell makeup. I'm going to use this to dry brush. The color I've chosen is Vallejo Game Color Somber Gray. If you don't have this color, a blue gray will also work or you can take some light gray and add a little bit of purple into it because this somber gray is basically a little bit of a purplish gray color just like you've seen me do before taking the majority of the paint I'm also rolling the brush since it's a round brush to get most of it off so I don't end up with paint on one side that ends up smearing on the model and as you've seen me do before I'm gonna use light brush pressure keeping most of my brush strokes in a downward motion and perpendicular to any of the hard edges that I'm trying to highlight. I'm going to do the model once over the entire area and then I'm going to go and look to try to pick out areas that either didn't get covered the first time and then after that 
I'm going to try and find areas that would catch more light than others, and they're going to get a little bit extra. If you don't have a rounded brush like this, a traditional dry brush, a flat, wide-edged brush will work just fine. And that'll actually be a little bit better if you don't like getting some of the streaks over the flat panels as much because you can really just kind of keep it perpendicular and just barely catch the edges with a little bit more control. The reason I like this round brush now is that I feel it helps me not put too much paint over the edges and the small coloration that I get on the flat surfaces is actually beneficial in that it makes a little bit more interesting color variation on those larger surface areas where otherwise it might just be a little bit of dark into a, a gradual highlight with the contrast paint. It's all personal preference. Do what you like. I'm just explaining what I am doing on this model in this particular paint job. With the purple all highlighted, I'm ready to start the detail base colors. The Merrick Militia uses red accents on the right and blue on the left. It's the accents, not necessarily stripes, so if you're not comfortable painting stripes, you're more than welcome to just highlight a panel following the panel lines and keep it a little bit more simple and less technical. There's nothing wrong with that. Do whatever you're comfortable with. I'm gonna be using heavy charcoal, Viejo model color, royal blue, and Viejo model color, red. I find that this red and blue goes over the purple really well and doesn't take more than one or two coats depending on how thick the paint is applied. Starting with the red, a little bit of water. I'm using a zero liner brush from Monument Slow Fuse. I get my paint to a fairly thin consistency and I'm going to find some natural panel lines to start blocking in my red accents. If you're trying out stripes for the first time or you've only had a few iterations of practice, try not to go too narrow on the stripe width. That'll give you some room to work. Use light brush pressure. Keep your paints fairly thin so that in case you make any mistakes, you can wipe or brush away with a clean brush the area that has a, a spill and then touch it up. If you don't make it in time or you find it later it's difficult to use the contrast paint to reset to the same color but you have the somber gray color that you applied earlier which will cover up fairly well and not go overly noticed on the purple see this natural line here I'm just gonna follow this panel perpendicular to this recessed area and then follow up the diagonal the way I do the red is anywhere that's on the underside where there's more shadow, I tend to just do one coat unless I really just missed an area. And then any area that's on a higher side, I'll come back and touch that up so that you get, even then, just a slight gradient between a brighter and less bright red. I finished my red. Now I've started with the blue. Same process as before. The scheme typically mirrors the opposite side doesn't mean you have to follow that exact pattern, especially if you have some asymmetry for the weapons or the mech might not have a pair of arms, things like that, but just go with what you enjoy. At this point, I went and blocked in the charcoal on the canopy and a few other areas that I had done before putting the purple on just to reinforce in a couple areas that were just easy to get to and I didn't do at the beginning. You could call this done. I've already added a little bit of brown and a brown wash to the base to start that process. I think I'd like to add a little bit more weathering to the stripes to match the overall look of the purple as well. Again, stop where you're comfortable. If you're happy with this result, do what you would normally do with your own miniatures. Add some cockpit details or some decals or some flocking on the base. I would seal it up with some clear coat and be done. That being said, for the blue, I'm gonna use model color magic blue it's worn off the label there and model color clear orange I'm gonna dry brush these and I had mentioned earlier about using a small dry brush I've got a couple of old synthetic brushes the one on the right has just been frayed and abused for a while the one on the left I actually cut shorter so you do need to be careful if you do this because if the bristles get a little too stiff you can potentially damage the paint 
depending on how aggressive you are, but just, just be aware of it. If you're using light dry brush pressure, it shouldn't be a problem. Starting with the blue, I'm gonna follow the same process. A little bit of paint on the brush, dry off most of it on a piece of paper towel, and then aim for the raised edges. I'm using light brush pressure. I really don't want to get too carried away, and I also want to keep this blue paint as close as possible to just the blue areas. A little bit of spillover onto the purple will most likely just go unnoticed, but again, I'm just trying to minimize any of that throughout the process. Continue working until you're happy with the level of edge dry brush highlights, and then we'll move on to red. All right, same process as before, but now I'm using orange on the red striped areas. Trying to keep my brush strokes localized to the red edges. If you find that the orange you're using doesn't really seem to show up too well, you can always go a shade lighter. If you don't have a lighter shade of orange, you can try a light flesh tone. Try to avoid using white. The red being a little bit harder to see the variation in, you may need to do one layer and come back after it's dried to see after it's dried and muted out. If it was as much as you wanted, then try a second layer. If you don't want to do dry brushing, you can always do an edge highlight with a fine brush. You could try glazing instead and doing a nice little small area blend, which would really show nicely up on the stripes. And since it's a smaller area, you wouldn't have to do as much on the miniature overall. And there you have it, some subtle highlights on the stripes that ties well with the rest of the purple. Again, take this model to the level that you're comfortable with, adding details or calling it finish and just finishing the base and sealing it up, maybe adding some canopy glow. Of course, I added a bunch of details, went in and decaled and put on glazing on the canopy. I also added the missile elements, which are clearly obvious now. Those are courtesy of Hardware Studios. Link will be in the description below. What I did want to say is that I went back after doing the details, looking at the overall color of the miniature and the appearance of the purple, and my lighting really does show it as slightly darker than it appears in person. So I took a makeup brush and went back and dry brushed that somber gray back over a lot of the panels to bring it out as a little bit more of a weathered and brighter purple in the areas that I felt would catch the most light. As you can see in the pictures here, the purple presents much better it's a lot brighter and more vibrant in a lot of the areas where I went back and dry brushed over. And if that's what you want to do with yours, then that's what I suggest you can do. If you want to have a darker purple, just continue with the process that I showed you earlier. The great part about it is, is that even after doing all these other steps, you can always go back and dry brush in certain areas where you want to have a little more vibrancy or just touch something up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your questions or comments below. Follow us on Battletech camo specs online on facebook give us a subscribe thanks for watching and we'll see you next time shutdown sequence initiated